Uganda is richly endowed with abundant energy resources which are fairly distributed throughout the country. According to Uganda's energy history, electricity was generated at the Owen Falls Dam, which remained the country's sole energy producer for decades. This supplied parts of the country with some sold to neighboring countries like Kenya. Because of its limited supply, electricity distribution was limited to a few urban centers and the industrial sector. But even this was not enough. In the 90s, the NRM government embarked on a plan to divest enterprises to create efficiency and also attract capital, which saw the repeal of the 1964 UEB Act to create the 1999 Electricity Act. This gave birth to the Uganda Electricity Generation Company Limited, the Uganda Electricity Transmission Company Limited, and the Uganda Electricity Distribution Company Limited, plus the Electricity Regulatory Authority era to supervise the liberalized sector. The purpose of unbundling this sector was to create efficiency in the service of electricity. Number two, to attract private capital. Why? Because when it was one government corporation called UEB, it was a pure, purely public. So to bring in private capital, you had to open up so that private people know where do we bring in our money. Government engaged another integrated small hydropower project under which several dams were to be built at various sites around the country starting 2016. Transmission lines have also been built to ease electricity distribution across the country. Our transmission lines are now currently at 2,000. 300 kilometers with an additional 1,300 under development. Then there is Karuma Hydroelectric Power Station, a 600 megawatt hydroelectric power project whose commissioning has been delayed, but when completed, it will be the largest power generating installation in the country. With the efforts in place, Distribution access stands at 51%, with 24% on the grid and 27% off-grid. The Ministry of Energy envisages growth of distribution access to 80% by 2030. Various mini power plants have also been encouraged, especially evident among sugar-producing plants that produce energy also added onto the national grid capacity. Uganda therefore produces more electricity than is demanded. Simon Kasiate from the Uganda Electricity Generation Company Limited says at peak time, only about half of the generated capacity is actually used. At peak time demand, this country uses about 670 megawatts. It means we have an excess thereof of about 500 megawatts. As you have many more industrial parks being set up, mm -hmm. factories setting up here, a lot of this electricity, which we now consider to be excess, will be mopped up in terms of consumption by these huge industries. When supply is ahead of demand, you have a smooth running. When demand is ahead of supply, you are always in inefficiencies and deficits. And when you have deficits, you go into rationing. When you do rationing, means that a certain group of people will be having, while another one is off. While another one is off, another one is having. And we have overcome that. In Uganda, we overcame that in 2012. Electricity Regulatory Authority era also says Excess in supply to demand is used as a marketing strategy to attract investors with assurance of available power. Part of this excess power is even sold to the neighboring countries under the East African power pool. We sell power to Kenya, but they also sell back some of that power. How that works is that they are hard to reach areas in Uganda that can easily be accessed from Kenya, for instance. This happens again in Rwanda. We sell power to Rwanda and they sell back through Kisoro some of that power. And we also sell power to Tanzania. We're also working on uh, uh, developing power infrastructure to sell power to South Sudan. Although supply seems to be ahead of demand, this does not mean lower tariffs. Consumers both at domestic and industrial level continue to decry high tariffs. All the people who use electricity have got the capacity to pay for that electricity. Other than that, the people who we call the low-income earners, who we do sympathize with, they actually have a price of electricity specific to them, where they pay 250 shillings per unit of electricity they use. Those people use within 15 units, and we have given every domestic consumer the first 15 units of electricity they use. They are charged 250 shillings, Uganda money. The compensation of landowners 
where these huge uh, high voltage power lines have got to pass remains a huge impediment and that is reflected in the end user tariff. Technologies like the prepaid metering system, commonly known as Yaka, have helped better profitability on electricity while providing ease of use to the consumers as well. This has reduced power losses from 34% to 17%. If you don't use the power that is transmitted or distributed to your household, somehow it goes back into the system and it is used placed by somebody. So one of the things that we do in the ministry is to educate Ugandans on efficient ways of using the power. Uganda is now exploring other energy sources like geothermal energy, whose exploration is being carried out in areas of Kibido, Panyimur and Buranga. Government is also developing the geothermal policy and legislation to attract private sector participation in the geothermal development. Wind, solar and nuclear energy are as well viable options Uganda is looking into. Mildred Tuhaise, NBS, live at 9.